In Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, we learn that Qui-Gon Jinn's master was Count Dooku, a Sith Lord and former Jedi. This led to many questions over the years about Qui-Gon and Dooku's relationship that were finally now getting answered in the canon books Master and Apprentice, and Dooku, Jedi Lost. It's all pretty cool, but what's really interesting is we're also learning about a new Jedi, Dooku's very first apprentice before Qui-Gon. His name was Rail Avaros, a human male from the planet Ringo Vinda, who would come to to wield a blue lightsaber. Rail was inducted into the Jedi Order when he was a staggering five years old, so late that Obi-Wan had never even heard of a youngling inducted into the Order at this age. Because Rail came into the Order so late, he really struggled to conform to the Jedi Code. Qui-Gon even thought that Rail got away with a lot and was not held to the same standard as other Jedi because the Council took into account his already ingrained behavior from the first years outside of the Temple. Rail was most noted for his messy and unkept appearance, which clashed with the impeccable regality of Dooku's appearance when he was his apprentice. Rail was so sloppy that many people didn't know he was a Jedi when they first met him. He drank regularly, did death sticks, smoked, and even slept around. Rail justified himself by saying, you know, there have always been Jedi, let's be honest, more than a few who see celibacy as an ideal, not a rule. Rail felt that because he wasn't falling in love, that he wasn't breaking the spirit of the Jedi Code. He felt that if he acted immediately and decisively on his urges, then they wouldn't have time to rot him on the inside. That doesn't compromise my emotions, does it? Divide my loyalties? Anything like that. I might have broken the letter of the law, but not the spirit. Clearly, he wasn't the model Jedi. And let's be real, he was a player. After Avaros became a Jedi Knight, miraculously, he joined with Dooku and his new Padawan Qui-Gon on a few occasions. Once they fought in the Battle of Shurapak, and another time Rail helped Qui-Gon get to know the enigmatic Dooku and even taught him to lightsaber fight, Rail and Qui-Gon formed a close connection. Being brothers to the same dad in a sense, they were kind of like Obi-Wan and Anakin. Qui-Gon would even confide in Rail like no other Jedi, especially after Dooku used the dark side to kill a bounty hunter that captured Qui-Gon when he was a Padawan. Rail wasn't too concerned about Dooku's conduct, though since Rail felt that the ways nearly always justified the means. It was even Avros who introduced Dooku to the great Senator Palpatine, and we all know how that would turn out. Finally, Rail Avaros would take an apprentice of his own, the Tholian named Nim Piana, the cousin of Rich Piana. No, I'm just kidding. They were a powerful pair, but on one mission, they were assigned to protect a freighter from pirates when its crew unexpectedly mutinied. Instead of going through the lengthy protocol to disable the ship, Avaros decided instead to attack them and take back the ship. During this fight, his apprentice got hit with a slicer dart, which is basically a hacking device for the brain which takes over the actions of the person it hits. Gen Generally, they are incredibly unpredictable, which is why they aren't used very often. But in this case, it made Nim attack her master. In a split second, Rail had to make the hardest decision of his life. He killed his compromised Padawan to protect his own life and ensure the success of retaking the ship. Rail was found innocent by the Jedi Council, despite him choosing to fight when he shouldn't have. The situation forever scarred Avaros, and he was assigned to take care of another young girl on the planet of Pyjol. Except this girl wasn't a Jedi, but a very young princess. She was so young that she couldn't rule yet, and political infighting made it impossible to find a temporary ruler as she grew up. So the planet agreed to appoint a Jedi to be the Lord Regent, someone to rule in her steed until she became of age. The council assigned Rail to the position because he was the most likely to be uncorrupted by the wealth and glitz of living in a palace. It worked, and even after eight years of the assignment, he still dressed like a hobo. He cared deeply for the princess princess named Fanry, and cared for her like his old apprentice, perhaps even to a fault. Qui-Gon once asked him, You think if you succeed with Fanry, it'll make up for what happened to Nim? Nothing makes up for it, said Avros. Nothing ever can, nothing ever could. But at least it won't make me feel like I'm poisoned to anybody I get close to. And by the way, that's what he actually kind of sounds like in the audiobook. He kind of sounds like a somewhat cowboy. When it came time for Princess Fanry to be crowned queen, there was a dispute on Pi Joel over its hyperspace route and the control that Zerker Corporation had over the planet. A treaty to open the route and give the corporation more control over the planet was drafted, which Rail approved since he believed it would be best for the planet, for Princess Fanry and the Republic in general. Some people of the planet disagreed though, and terrorist attacks began. This led Rail and the Republic to ask for the help of the Jedi to stabilize the situation. So, the Council sent Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan to make sure the treaty was signed. But when Qui-Gon discovered that Zerker Corporation was using slaves and that 
Rail didn't seem to mind, Qui-Gon and him disagreed over the treaty, and Qui-Gon refused to represent the Republic to endorse it. He felt that Rail was failing by approving a treaty that gave a corporation control over an entire system that stripped power from its future queen. This caused an impasse between the two until the princess herself betrays Rail for taking her power and for treating her like his former apprentice, rather talking at her rather than listening to her, protecting her rather than teaching. Rail was blindsided by his compassion for the little girl, and it all nearly blows up until Princess Fanry is defeated by her own people over the issue of the slaves. Zerker Corporation is expelled from the system, and Qui-Gon and Avaros reconcile. Rail is shook, though, that he was blindsided by compassion, and this makes him consider consider leaving the Jedi Order once and for all. Maybe this isn't the life for him. He clearly doesn't keep the rules, so why should he stay? At this time, Dooku had recently left the Jedi himself and reclaimed his title as Count of Sereno. Dooku hears about Rail's plight and asks him to join him on Sereno so that he may share with Rail a great power that he discovered. Essentially, Dooku asks Avaros to leave the Order, which would be the first step to joining the Dark Side. Rail wrestles with the decision. It all makes sense and fits in with what he wants to do, and you know, will be better for him, but he also senses the dark side in Dooku, and Rail chooses to stay in the light with the Jedi. Dooku becomes angry and asks why he would choose the path of weakness. Rail then quotes Qui-Gon, We don't choose the path because we want to win. We choose it because it is the light. So there you have it. That's Rail Avros' story. A renegade outlaw Jedi, kind of like a cowboy, that doesn't really care what anyone says about him, but ultimately chooses the right side in the end. He's like a Jedi version of Star-Lord or Han Solo, kind of. So what do you guys think? Do you hope we get more stories about Rail? I hope we do. I think he's pretty cool. Definitely very, very rogue. And, you know, it's kind of like if you had Jedi powers and you just wanted to do what you wanted to do. You're a bit of a bad boy, I guess. But, you know, it could be an interesting story character if they want to extrapolate on that. If they put him in a movie, who would you want to see him play? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit like if you enjoyed this canon video, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Until then, remember... The Force will be with you, always.